This video demonstrates how to install Ubuntu Server 22.04 LTS into VirtualBox 7. The outcomes for this video, or what the video demonstrates, include how to download Ubuntu Server 22.04 LTS, configure an Ubuntu Server 22.04 virtual machine in VirtualBox 7, disable Cloud Init, Update Ubuntu Server, install VirtualBox guest editions, and finally verify that, that the SSH or Secure Shell server works inside Ubuntu Server. Requirements An Internet Connection. Ubuntu Server minimum requirements for your virtual machine include 1 GB of RAM, a CPU of at least 2 GHz, storage of 2.5 GB, the barest minimum and in this video I'm going to use a 25 gigabyte storage, a local area network or a LAN access, virtualization enabled on the host computer with VirtualBox 7 installed, and an additional computer on the same network with SSH enabled. The next three slides contain additional sources of info, a list of the software used in making this video, and a disclaimer. If you wish, you can stop this video to read the slides. Here I am at ubuntu.com slash download slash server and I'm going to download the Ubuntu server to install in a virtual machine. Now there is another alternative here. You can get some instant Ubuntu VMs or virtual machines but I'm going to follow through on this. Click on the green box here and it's going to come up and ask where you want to download it. You have to keep track of it. I'm going to put it on my F drive, para, project, the folder here, files. Click save. And it's going to take a while to download it. Got one minute left, two minutes left. Now it says zero seconds left. Okay, so now it's fully downloaded. Here I am in VirtualBox Manager, and I'm going to configure a virtual machine or VM to install Ubuntu 22.04 server in. First go up here to the top and click on the many pointed star. The first step is to give the VM a virtual machine name and operating system or OS. For the name, I will call it Base Ubuntu 2204 SRVR. Now I've done some practice runs creating this server and have a folder already set up for it. But you can choose where you want your VM stored by clicking on the down caret and selecting Other. Next is the ISO image that you downloaded. You will have to tell VirtualBox where it is in your file system. Here a choice is listed because I have previously installed a server ISO file and had some practice with it before I made the video. You'll notice that VirtualBox uses the name of the ISO file to automatically set the type to Linux and the version to Ubuntu 64-bit. Click in the Skip Unattended Installation box because we are going to make additional choices for this server. At the bottom it says you have Select it to skip unattended guest OS install. The guest OS will be installed manually. Finally, click Next. In hardware, I'm leaving the amount of RAM or random access memory at 2GB or 2048 MB. I'm also leaving the number of processors at 1, though you might want to give your server an extra processor if you have it available. For Ubuntu, leave the Enable EFI box unchecked, and then click on Next. For virtual hard disks, leave it at the default unless you know that you want to install additional software or maybe install less software. If you click on the Pre-Allocate Full Size, the VM will grab the full 25 gigabyte of storage from your host computer right now instead of expanding your VM storage as it's needed. Click Next. If everything looks good to you, click Finish. 
Now one setting that needs to be changed is the network setting. It needs to be changed from NAT to bridge connector. Since this VM is a server, you will probably want other machines to connect to this server. Setting the network adapter to bridge connector allows other machines on your local network to access the Ubuntu server. Finally, click OK. Here I am in VirtualBox 7 and here's my virtual machine that I've configured or created. So the next step is to basically install the ISO file. Right click, start, normal start, and I'm going to have to move this around a little bit. It says try or install Ubuntu Server and Ubuntu Server with the HWE kernel. you got two choices here, or actually three, test memory. And so basically an HWE kernel is used only on Ubuntu LTS releases. It's simply a newer generic kernel that is used in an interim release of Ubuntu. Well, I didn't make a choice there, and I kind of accepted the basic one. But, for example, the current HW kernel for Ubuntu 22.04 may be the one for 22.10, but I did not want to install the HW kernel anyway. I'm going to keep this as simple as possible. So now we've got some choices. You pick your language. I'm going to accept the default of English. Your mouse is not going to work in here. Hit enter for English, but you can use the arrow keys to go up and down. And the layout, I'm going to accept English US for the keyboard. And I'm going to go click on the done. So I've got the base for the installation. I've got Ubuntu server, Ubuntu server minimized, or additional option. So I'm going to accept Ubuntu server and not go down to choose the minimized server or third-party drivers. Simply hit enter. It's going to ask you to configure at least one interface this server can use to talk to other machines. I'm just going to accept the default. Now you notice it's got an IP address of 192.168.1.23. So that will probably be the machine's IP address. I'm not 100% sure on that because I don't give it a static IP address. We'll check it out before we do SSH to this server. Click Done. Proxy address. There's no proxy for this server. Click Enter. No alternative mirror. I'm just going to go to Ubuntu.com, Ubuntu, the US archive. Click Done. It says Configure a guided storage layout, or create a custom one. You'll notice it has an X where it asks you to set this disk as an LVM group. I'm going to uncheck that. Use the arrow keys to go down here. Hit the space bar to uncheck it. And basically, an LVM or logical volume manager is a way of handling multiple disks and volumes under one management unit. It's more complex, but makes it easier to manage disks when you're using more than one disk. Since this machine has been configured to use only one disk originally, it'd be much easier to uncheck the LVM box, which I've done. Keep going down with the arrow key and hit Done. It says it's going to install 24.997 gigabytes. I'm going to say Done, and let's go. Got a uh, lookout box where it says Confirm Destructive Action. Basically make sure there's nothing on your uh, disk that you've created from VirtualBox, so I'm going to click Continue. Ask for your name, hit Enter, your server's name, base, Ubuntu 22.04 SRVR, hit Enter. I'm going to use my username is the same as my name. Password, make sure you type in the same one. And then hit enter again and then click done. Now it says upgrade this machine to Ubuntu Pro for security updates on a much wider range of packages until 2032. I'm going to leave it in skip for now. What Ubuntu Pro is, it's a version designed for public clouds with a focus on production enterprise use. 
And it's got some additional components out of the box, but I'm going to stick to the basic Ubuntu server version. Click continue. And I'm going to use the space bar to install OpenSSH server. That way I can connect to this server from another machine. That puts an X in there. I'm not going to import SSH identity. Maybe I'll make a video later on how to go around doing this. But right now I'm just going to use a username and password to connect to this server. And then use the arrow key and we'll go back down to done. Hit done. And then it asks, there are popular snaps in the server environments. Select or deselect with space. And I'm not going to pick any of these for this virtual server. I'll go all the way down and click done. And now it's working to install everything. And I'll come back when it's uh, got everything installed. So now the install is complete. I'm going to use the arrow key to click on reboot now. It says failed unmounting CD-ROM. All you have to do here is click enter and it'll continue. Okay, so now you're ready to log in. So you'll see it says finish execute cloud user final scripts and reach target cloud init target on the bottom. And this kind of put a lot of stuff on the screen. So I'm going to disable cloud init and then update the server in the next section of this video. So my screen is a little different than the first start because overnight Windows decided to do an update and that automatically turned off VirtualBox. So this is actually the second time I've logged in. But on the second restart of Ubuntu Server, your login screen might look like this. And you'll see it's got some extra information there. And both views are due to the Cloud Init script. Cloud Init is an open source tool developed by Canonical that provisions or sets up virtual machines that run in a cloud environment. It is also used for initializing the server on a first boot. In this Ubuntu server, I will disable cloud init instead of removing it completely. So you can remove it completely if you wish. So let's first log in. Hit enter. You may have to hit it twice. Make sure you have focus on the virtual machine. And so now I'm logged in. And so to disable it, I would use sudo touch etc cloud cloud dash init dot disabled. And this creates a file called cloud init disabled. And it's an empty file. Of course, you have to enter your password. And if you want to take a look at it, you would simply hit the up arrow. And I would just do a cat on the file. So there's nothing in that file. What I want to do now is update the server because I want to have all the latest updates and upgrades in it. And to do that, I would do a sudo apt update and and sudo apt upgrade and then a dash y for yes. So I won't have to enter a yes as it does the update and upgrade. And so it asks what services should be restarted. I'm simply going to go down where it says OK and take the default. Click OK. And I'm going to do a restart because in the next section, I'm going to install VirtualBox Guest Editions. So now I don't have the extra messages on the start because I've disabled Cloud Init. Here I am back at the login page of this Ubuntu server. And I'm going to be installing VirtualBox Guest Editions in case I want to attach a USB device to the server. So log in first. So now I'm logged in. 
Now I'm going to go up here where it says Devices and insert Guest Edition CD image into Ubuntu Server and then come back and I'm going to make a new directory where I'm going to put the files. And sudo make dir-v for verbose and I will make it media cd rom. Hit enter. So it's created the directory and then I'm going to mount the guest editions files into that directory. sudo mount device dev cd rom into media cd rom. So now I'm going to do an ls media cd rom. And there are my guest edition files. So the next thing I'm going to have to do is install some necessary dependencies to help with the VirtualBox guest editions install. sudo apt install dash y dkms dynamic kernel module support build essential linux headers generic linux headers dash dollar uname dash r get my release info and hit enter so finally the essential dependencies are installed now i'm going to install virtualbox guest editions sudo media cd rom and the file i'm going to use is v b l and then hit a tab linux editions dot run and again, this is going to take a while. So uh, after a few minutes, it's completed. It says, VirtualBox guest editions running kernel modules will not be replaced until the system is restarted. Don't worry if you see that just hanging up there for about a minute or so, because I guess that's the way it's installed. So now I've got VirtualBox guest editions. And the next and last section will cover how to SSH into this Ubuntu server. Go ahead and reboot this server in order to finish installing VirtualBox guest editions. If you recall, when we installed Ubuntu server, we also checked the box to install SSH or Secure Shell. This section of the video verifies that the SSH server is working in Ubuntu. Keep in mind that for SSH to work, both machines must be on the same local network or LAN. When working with VirtualBox virtual machines, the most common way to manage this is to ensure both machines have their network adapter set to bridged adapter. So in order to use the SSH server, it is necessary to know the IP address of the server. So basically, I'm going to go log in and find out the IP address of this server. Password. And to find the IP address, I use IP space A. There it is. INET 192.168.1.23. Now let's switch to a Win 11 or a Win 10 machine to make sure it has the SSH client enabled. And I'm going to go through the steps and make sure it's enabled. Go to Start, Settings, Apps, Optional Features, Open SSH Client, and it says Uninstall here. So now if you do this on a Windows 10, the graphics are going to be a little bit different, but all the steps are the same. So it's enabled. So now I'm going to close this, open up PowerShell, PowerShell. Now I'm going to connect to the Ubuntu server, and it would be SSH, username is Mike, and 
at 192.168.1.23 was the IP address of the server. Hit enter. It says the authenticity of host can't be established. Well, it was just checked previously. So it asks, are you sure you want to continue connecting? And I have to type in YES for yes. And warning, permanently added 192.168.1.23 to the list of known hosts. I also asked for my password. I've connected to the server. And it says Mike at base Ubuntu 2204 server. And let me just run a little... Python program, because I know this Windows machine doesn't have Python installed. String equal Ubuntu server 2204. And then I'm just going to do a print f string hello string closing, closing quotation marks, closing parentheses. And it says, hello, Ubuntu Server 22.04. And I'm going to log out of the server using the logout command. If you notice right here, it says PSC. I'm back in PowerShell instead of at the server. So that's it for installing Ubuntu 22.04 server, updating it, installing VirtualBox Guest Editions, and verifying SSH. If you don't like the small screen on the Ubuntu server, Check out the change display resolution in Ubuntu 22.04 server video on this channel. Thank you for watching this. If you have any questions on this video, please ask them in the comments below. Also, if there is a video you would like to see made, please let me know. While I can't promise anything, I will try and look into it. Cheers.